everyone! Welcome back to Sky Pie! So I'm your host, Pie, and I'm joined again with my sister, Amber. And this is a show about weather news, and boy, I thought that starting this in late June, it would make it a little easier. But my goodness, there is so much news to cover that we'll probably just be doing the biggest stories from today. So, like, or, I mean, sorry, that this week or this month and whatnot. So... It was a busy week. Yes, oh, busy even month. today, like, there were a bunch of tornado warnings in Michigan here and so <laughs> yes Amber said tornadoes before and now I got my mind all set on that so yes <laughs> there was a bunch of tornadoes and this was just Michigan and there was a ton in Illinois as I was coming back from a storm chase today and oh I just wish I was out over there but at least I get to spend today with you guys so, anyway, why don't we jump into the first big news story, and that is Chicagoland getting hit by a tornado at, like, 11 p.m. at night. So, Amber... I was, was going to ask you what the big one was, but I guess that... Well, I mean, it's the biggest so story. Much it, it wasn't... It, yeah, and, I mean, I think it was the most powerful one. It was in the EF3, so... Let's let me pull up the the damage survey. Well, these are fast facts. So, in summary, during the late evening into early overnight on Sunday, June twentieth, storms increased in intensity rapidly as they moved toward and into the Chicago metropolitan Ooh, let me, area. Let me pull up the radar that I have from that day. Most significant damage impacted southwest suburbs of of Naperville, Woodridge, Darien. Ridge and Willow Springs between 11 and 11.30 at night. Never want to hear about a tornado hitting. Yeah, this was on. rain wrap too. I mean, this is what I was just recording on the iPad here. So I started zooming in just as this velocity couplet showed up here. I think you called me about that time saying <laughs> Chicago's in trouble. Yeah. Amber, there it is. Your radar. Chicago's in trouble. There's the velocity yeah, so couplet just plowing through there uh it says it's the first ef2 plus tornado to occur in the chicago metro since june 22nd in 2015 so it's been a few years mm -hmm. uh, it's interesting they're calling it a an ef2 plus on this survey but um you said they've now rated it an ef3 yeah it's t uh, yeah it's totally so I, I have the damage survey here pulled up on google earth so it's yeah it did some oh, yeah, ef3 damage right here just like 230 homes down thousands of trees and caused at least 11 injuries they're saying yeah i mean look at this house it's like it's not quite sweeped off the foundation so <laughs> oh yeah there's a, there's a toaster just chilling there i mean it's there's if you can call that a house i'm not sure you can oh, say yeah, this I mean, house yeah it, the, that <laughs> it was a house oh uh, and look at this well, we, like this was a tight tornado, too. It was, it did not do much damage to the neighboring houses as well. Yeah, we, we saw some aerial footage, right, that was on YouTube and... Yes, out, like, actually, the guy... Houses on either yeah, side. the guy that helped me look for my drone, uh, High Risk Chris, actually got some drone footage of it. So we'll make sure to Hi, include that into the description here. Maybe we can pull up uh still frame of that so if you want to see the full thing make sure to check out his channel here but so it's relatively contained and but yeah see there's the house that that caused the ef3 damage there so well and as we looked at it further it started to get wider right so we wondered if it was multi-vortices because a house over here would be hit and a house over here would be hit just was an interesting well yeah let me see if i can have. pull up the debris ball uh loops that i saved from that yeah here we go so uh go to the radar tab and it talks about the radar it was so close to the radar i site too, i did not so. realize this but there's another debris ball right there next to the radar site i don't remember that well i mean you'd have to be pretty observant which is what these guys get paid to do so well i guess i remember a north and a south tornado warning but mm -hmm. i didn't Realize there were two on the ground simultaneously. Mm -hmm. um, so part of this radar, they have a summary here. As the EF3 tornado continued past Woodridge, it displayed a classic tornado debris signature with a spike in ref reflectivity. I'm not sure I've ever noticed a spike. 
Oh no, that's just um, it. Just like two. it literally just looks like hail on the radar. It's just a little really? pink. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize that tight rotational signature drop in correlation coefficient values and a drop in differential reflectivity at negative zero decibels. While this signature helps National Weather Service meteorologists by confirming a dangerous tornado is ongoing, it is never something we want to see, especially in a densely populated area. Yeah, no kidding. I didn't know it showed up like a hail spike. Yes. I mean, how many people no, not know a, what not a hail a spike? No, no, not a hail spike. See, it's just a little pink. So it looks it looks like hail on the radar. See, just a little Thanks. dab of pink there. Yeah, so here's my, here's just a simple loop that I saved of the full scale of it. So you can really see here how it's just a nice little debris ball, and then it just gets lofted. I actually had to use tilt two to see above all the buildings and stuff, but I never noticed so this before. That, yeah, there's the little radar thing they must have been sweating a little bit when they saw that or who knows maybe they didn't because they just looks like they just warned this this whole area here and it's not one they can look out the window and see from their yeah national weather service site so out of all of these houses that were impacted here really only like one security camera footage from someone's house has really surfaced and so the um, here, Fox 32 here has a, a crazy video that was submitted by Steve Cyanus. So be sure to check out this one, like the basketball who <laughs> just kind of goes flying through here. And like, it's just, it turns out to be nice and peaceful. And then it's just absolute chaos. Now the house doesn't get like completely destroyed here. So that's just crazy. I can't imagine, like, how do you... How many people do you think actually, like, were asleep at the time of this tornado? It's just crazy. Well, you can kind of hear the tornado sirens in the background, so you hope that they at least got the alert in time to get undercover, but um, it is surprising that more security camera footage yeah. kind of popped up. How many doorbell yeah, cameras there, are there? Um, Live Storm Chasers here has some dash cam footage that you can check out here, and that one's crazy, too, because it is just... Like, it's like, not raining at all, and then it's just downpouring rain. And that happens to be so many times when driving through the bear's cage, you'll just get curtains of rain, and then it'll just be uh, totally clear for a second, and it'll just be, like, uh, anki-dori. Like, and so, hey, like, yeah. Well, what do you think you would do, Amber, if you were on the road there, just driving through the the tornado, and or uh, I mean, yeah. you could like your phone has just gone off. You could kind of hear sirens. What what do you think you would do at that point? I think I um, now I assume this is a storm chaser since it's on live storm chasers dot com. Yeah. And so they are <laughs> purposely trying to get towards the circulation. But before I knew what I was doing, I was driving through Denver uh, sh shortly after moving out to Colorado. Yeah. And uh, really? we were at a Rockies baseball game. Um, it was clear skies the whole time we were at the game, and when we were leaving the stadium, we saw flashes of lightning to the north. Um, now you have to park your car like forever away from the stadium, so the it was like heat lightning. You couldn't really tell where it was coming from, but it was getting brighter the more we walked. And we finally were like, my friends and I, were like we gotta we gotta run. It's gonna start raining on this. I didn't have any kind of phone. I don't think I even had a cell phone then. This Which is like, stadium was this? This is in Denver at the Rocky Stadium. Yep. Gotcha. So we mm -hmm. were way north in the parking lot, um, probably on the other side of that ridge there. Like, it felt like a mile yeah. away. <laughs> but, uh, so we're like, we have to run. I had, yeah, I had no cell phone. This is probably 2008, 2009. <laughs> no and, cell phone uh, yet, huh? No cell phone. And it started to pour as we could see the car. We're like, there it is. And then psh, just started to rain. And poor. So Just then we the drove home rain. in this deluge, and we knew there were tornado. What? I don't remember. Maybe someone in my car had a phone, and they said, there's a tornado warning, there's a tornado warning. Oh, like, Just really? Right. Like for Denver? And I was yeah, I was freaked out. I was trying to dial all the radio stations to see if anybody was doing a live broadcast for a tornado oh, warning. No. I had no idea where it was. And so I just was driving at snail's pace or flooded 
lanes on I-25 and yeah. Oh, so um, you finally drove out. Of- oh, so you were already on the road at that point. And I mean, the whole drive to South Denver, I think, took over an hour hmm. just to get out of Denver. We finally drove out of it. And I, I just remember being panicked the entire time. It's nighttime. Hmm. I didn't know how to find out where the tornado was. And you look back at those experiences and you're like, only if I knew. Only if I had radar scope back then. Well, okay. What exactly? What what do you think you could do right now that is that is actually helpful even if you don't know how to use radar scope? Well, so in that case, we just kept driving as long as it seemed safe. You hear about stopping under an overpass, and you're like, no, the Weather Channel mm-hmm. says not to stop under an overpass, not to get out of your car. But as long as there wasn't debris going across the well, okay, road, say I debris can't... is going across the road. Like, what? What's the what? Do you, what should you do? Would stop and just be like, okay. I can't. I have no bearing. I don't know what to do. I'm well, okay, stop. okay. The <laughs> National Weather Service says to stop and get into a sturdy building. <laughs> so that's <laughs> really what you thing. should do if you have no idea what to <laughs> do. Even at midnight, when all of the downtown buildings are closed and locked, like there's not much you can do in Denver, uh, except for driving. <laughs> well, I mean, gas stations are a thing. So, but yeah, if you have True. radar scope, it can make it so much easier to like see where to go. For example, like this is kind of a little difficult to see here, but if you pull up the the velocity, and all of a sudden you can see where the um the tornado actually is so although it's so much easier. yeah it's so much easier gee should i go north or should i go south <laughs> it makes it so much <laughs> obvious well the, the crazy part about this storm was we drove out of it in south denver i got all the way home dropped off a friend i realized i had locked myself out of my house and i went up to the foothills where i had a friend and she had a spare key because i had i had the great ability of locking myself out of the house so i knew better anyway i was coming back down the foothills with my key jacob was in the car with me we're stopped at a stoplight and we see the same heat lightning coming towards us again now we're in colorado springs we're an hour south we just driven out of this crazy storm my nerves were shot i looked at jacob and i was like is that storm coming towards us they never come from the north they never come due south into colorado springs and uh, I mean, the next light, it, just, but... it slammed into us again. This was due north. This was Denver Metro to Colorado Springs. Um, net, well, oh, man, I kind of want to try to find the radar images for this now. Yeah. But <laughs> it takes I totally time. forgot about the story. Till then. And the next day at work, everybody was like, did you wake up to that storm last night? It was I brutal. Was driving I said, I in drove, it. <laughs> I drove through it twice. I said, so, yeah, well, Boy, I'll have to remember what year that was, because um, it was. It must have been when Jacob was out here for an internship, so maybe closer to 2011. Yeah, yeah. So you don't want to mess around with those nighttime storms, like the time to. Yeah, I know what you're all thinking. Like when it, when have... your phone's going off with a tornado warning, that's kind of the. Um... I didn't have a cell phone in 2011. <laughs> I know. So anyway, I was behind. really the only image of this tornado was got was captured by this guy, Matt Smith, who happened to have like a good view of it. And so this like it, the rain must have just cleared up or he must have just been barely in the inflow here because this is um, like just so spooky, just illuminated by the city lights. And so... That's a uh, a little bit scary there, and uh, like if, if like most people don't have the luxury of getting that kind of a view from a nighttime rain wrapped tornado there. So, well, and if you don't know what you're looking at, like how do you even know that's a tornado? Well, okay, that I mean, you would be able to see. You would be able to see it spinning with that kind of view because there the rain had cleared up just a little bit for him. Would you? I mean, was illuminated by lights, or is that his exposure on his camera where he could see it? No, that's, that's what it would look like to your naked eye. Yeah, because that's okay. the the phones like their night sight. They're they're taking like multiple frames and then like stitching them together for in a sense um, doing like a roundabout long exposure. So they're bringing mm-hmm. the camera quality up to our eye quality in a sense. It's so like a fancy. Phone. 
ones. I still have an ancient. <laughs> I finally got a phone, but now I have an ancient one. <laughs> oh, well, I mean, hey, my phone is getting on two years old, or uh, almost four years old now. So, I mean, if you had Google, you still have gotten the update. Your night shots that I do, that's for sure. Yeah. So, um, the storms then just kind of kept going off into the distance here. Let me pull that up as well. And so after they went through Chicago, then they continued on until into Indiana. So, and also created many other tornado warnings. I mean, it just seems like there just comes a point when I think the National Weather Service one is just like, oh, the conditions are just right. Just warn everything. <laughs> and so eventually <laughs> then it calmed down and made a nice wave and, and just gusted itself out over there. So. That really looks like a, an identical storm that went through Michigan just today. So. Yeah, that's a good point. It went point. right across yeah. Great Lakes today, mm -hmm. just like that. So... Here's um, the velocity just of it surging and just gusting out there. So, Thanks. yep. And That's yep. some powerful spring winds there. Yes. So, and also this reminds me of on the weather survey, they were talking about how, um, can't pull up the environment tab. All right, so under environment, one of the key elements to the environment was the rapid pace at which it destabilized. Earlier in the day, weakening showers and widespread cloud, cloud cover greatly limited the ability for the atmosphere to destabilize. The sun did not appear until around dinner time. That's really late. Which was <laughs> yeah. a developing, with a developing strong low-level jet allowed the air to rapidly become favorable for severe weather after dinner. It is not often the most unstable air of the day occurs after dark. As the atmosphere was rapidly destabilizing, so was the low-level wind shear. By 11 p.m., model analyzed 01 and 03 kilometer shear exceeded 30 to 35 knots, respectively, which is far sufficient for severe weather and rotating storms. Effective bulk wind shear also exceeded 40 knots, which is more than sufficient for rotating oh, storms, too degrees where they yeah there's the 40 knots right there observations however demonstrated that the amount of wind shear was not captured by forecast or model analyzed perimeters uh oh they didn't quite have a good forecast. well i mean yeah i mean forecast models will only do so good because they we don't have enough data points i mean if you look at the spc hourly mesoscale analysis say it like let's just take a peek at the observations like look at this like, we, that's all the observations that we have around the country. Just kind of, oh, like, oh, hey, well, maybe we've got 20. And, and who knows, maybe um, the, the models may have more than this. But the point is, is that we need way more, way, may, way more sensors around the country and even higher up in the atmosphere and way more powerful supercomputers before we're just going to get it right. Because, yeah, they, they only issued... A, um, a 5% for this day. It was just a 5% chance of tornadoes, so. Well, and that's kind of interesting thinking of my storm back with the Denver storm, too. That also must have been something triggered that storm late after dark. So, yeah, you just don't see it. Especially us in Colorado, we don't usually see severe storms after the sun goes down because it's just so cool here in the mountains. We don't have the humidity and we lose that heat at night. So yeah. <laughs> it's an interesting scenario. Mm -hmm. All right, so here were the tornado reports from that day. It looks like that there were 10 reported even farther east into Indiana and all the way over into Michigan and whatnot. So, and a couple of chasers got some of the ones in Iowa back when the sun was still up. So, but actually, you can see the 5% over here. This was generated by Tropical Storm Claudette. And so, and that generated some tornadoes down here that actually injured some more people. Although, actually, come to think of it, there was some tornadoes up here on the Indiana and Ohio border from... Uh, from the oh yeah, our brother Peter mentioned tornado warnings yeah. in Ohio. Yeah, so here comes yeah, the tropical storm. What were you saying? It sounds like Claudette um, produced an EF2 tornado, estimated peak winds at 127 miles per hour with 20 injuries. So um, 
I, I remember hearing Claudette coming in. I was like, Billy, you should go chase the tropical storm. You should. And he's like, no. Tropical storm. I don't do tropical I, storm. Yeah, I, I do not care much. There's a 5% go. But it sounds like, unfortunately, in, in this part of Alabama, there's quite a few mobile homes. Yeah. Um, and in one particular case, they said... Um, there was structural damage along Riddle Road near Horseshoe Road. A single wide mobile home was completely destroyed with the frame tossed over 100 yards away. The frame, like that's usually the bottom of the mobile home. Uh, it can be on wheels or whatever, but it, uh-huh. it was tossed 100 feet away with someone inside. And the remarkable story is they survived. They have significant injuries, but they he survived. I mean, if that's not a storm story for Weather Channel someday, I don't know what it is. But they they said a couple serious injuries, but yeah, um, most is. of them, most of the twenty injuries were minor. So yeah, well, no that was like, that was like double the injuries from Chicago. Well, and was this one also at nighttime? I guess no. This one was at oh, seven thirty a.m. Interesting. Yeah, so it was just when the tropical storm had come ashore here. So they said it started out at EF1, it went up to EF2, and then it ended right before it hit a big interstate and lifted at EF0, EF1 damage again. So Yeah, so this is about uh, the tornado path that I have here. They still have, it sounds like that the surveys are still undergoing, so there isn't much to show yet because you know this is a bit this was all part of a tropical storm so they've got a lot more work to do from what it sounds it's like probably a lot of flooding a lot of fl- flooding and stuff around i'm assuming yeah yeah that, there were a lot of tornado reports even down here on the coast so and there's dolphin island over there we vacation there frequently and so Right there, just like a direct hit through. But even like, look at this. The the vlo- the the reflectivity just kind of looks boring. It's just you know, it's just a tropical storm just chilling here. And who would have thought that there's tornadoes lurking in this whole mess? Well, yeah, it's like I would have thought it would have been closer down near the ocean along that line of thunderstorms there, but it's in. The middle of all that rain? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. How can you possibly feel? Well, I mean, the velocity, like, look at this. They're, like, having a dance between the range folding mm-hmm. here. They're, like, trying to get a good view of it, and they keep bouncing. <laughs> like, I don't, um, it's been a while since I've looked into the silence of the range folding, but I definitely know they can choose where it occurs in the velocity radar. So, like, there, they, like, just completely covered it up, so... This also showed up on the correlation coefficient a little bit too. So there it is. Just right when it goes through Burton. Yeah. Yep. So, yeah. Wow. Uh, I said an auditorium. I said an auditorium had a roof ripped off, but for the most part, it was mobile home damage in that area. Right. I wonder which one that was around here. I think this was it. This is just this is a blind guess because they haven't issued too much of it. So there, a couple of chasers did go down and get some drone footage of the event. So Livestorm Media got some and... And like a lot of this, this, this looked like a nasty tornado, even though that it only got an EF2 as compared to it. It just, it, it did a lot. Well, mobile, homes, mobile homes just aren't anchored to anything. So yeah, it's kind of like that tornado we had a couple years ago here in Colorado Springs that hit uh, a storage place on the east side. And it just took some RVs and just rolled them a couple times. Oh, yeah, times the Peyton just... Tornado, like, in February a few years ago. It just opened up. No, it couldn't have been February. Ah. February? Or maybe it was March. Okay. <laughs> I was like, that would have been really early for us. But, yeah, it's like there's nothing to those things, so they just roll and they just, they just like, peel open like a banana after being tossed around. So I think mobile homes are... I like that. 
Oh, so we we talked about a tornado and a tropical storm. There was so much this week, uh, or even the week before. What else do we have to cover? Oh, yeah. So I totally want to talk about this plane that flew around the this funnel cloud in Oklahoma. This is nuts here. He's just like gliding around it like it's just nothing. At like so, th- these were posted you- by his wife here. Um, when you sent that to me, I saw the headline. I was like, no way. There's no way. Or it has to be like as far away as a helicopter ride. Oh, I just couldn't believe he's it. He's probably when they within saw it. 50 feet of this thing. <laughs> I wonder when he noticed it. Like, was he right there when he was like, oh, oh it's right outside my window? <laughs> well, the, or, the article. Yeah. So we've got an article here from the Washington Post that goes more into detail about it. And they, they interviewed ah. the guy. So. Oklahoma City City native David Evans has been a pilot for about 30 years, but few things compare with what he encountered with flying his glider Sunday. Evans came face-to-face with a bona fide tornado and decided to hitch a ride on an upward-moving air around it. So that was really interesting. I thought he was just in a regular plane at first, so... But that kind of... That's really fascinating that he was gliding... Weather wasn't conducive for strong thunderstorm activity or tornadoes in the Sooner State on Sunday, but Evans found a landspout, a borderline tornado, that forms in a way similar to many waterspouts or dust devils. That meant it wasn't born from a thunderstorm or cloud-based rotation, but rather developed around the ground from the ground on up. That's interesting they described mm-hmm. it that way. It also couldn't be spotted on radar. There was no obvious large-scale weather features that would have clued meteorologists in the chance into the chance of four tornadoes. Realistically, it was more of a landspout, but we sort of have no justification as to why it occurred, said Ryan Bunker, a meteorologist at the National <laughs> yeah. Weather Service of Northern Yeah, because Northern like, Oklahoma. these storms are puny here. <laughs> He didn't have any answers. It's pretty funny when Norman, Oklahoma meteorologists are like, uh, <laughs> we're like the masters of tornadoes. And the radar and we... is so close, too. Instead, it appears that a small, broad surface based whirl, whirl cooked up in the heat of the afternoon sun and is routine during the summertime. I have a little motor glider, and you look at these thermals to stay aloft, said Evans. Who hadn't been optimistic about the day's gliding prospects, he took off from Wiley Post Airport on the northwest side of Oklahoma City anyway, hoping to get lucky. I motored around Tuttle and Minko, and then I saw some hawks. Evan recalled they always have a a telltale sign of where the thermals are. I started getting an indication of getting lift, so I circled in there with them. Broadway visible circulation that Evans was writing quickly became drawn into a cloud developing overhead. Now that's cool. Follow the hawks and then you'll Yeah, so he was the- there before the storm even formed. That stretched it up to the cloud base, causing it to become more narrow and to strengthen before a long funnel cloud appeared. That's super cool. Yeah, so ah. on the radar here, there is some kind of boundaries. You can kind of see some boundaries. There's there's a storm off here a little bit, but you can kind of see there's... Ugh, it's so hard to see. So, hmm? so you look at boundaries through um, velocity. I guess I always only look through them. At, you can kind of see them both ways. I, I'm always checking both of them to see how it is. So... Um, like, I mean, this looks like an outflow bound. Yeah, this might be an outflow boundary, or this might have been a boundary that was originally there. Where is he located on that? Right here is where it was. Minko and Tuttle. That, that little cloud, that little blip is what made that little funnel cloud. Yeah, it could start lightning on him, so it's not... (laughs) If it were anything like a Colorado storm, those little blips. Well, I imagine it takes a little bit of time to. But then again, it was. It was I mean, I, I would, for lack of a better term, get allow myself to get sucked into okay. it. <laughs> well, how do you come down from a glider? I guess we don't know. Well, I would imagine you just fly away, and then you would yeah, you would fly out of the. Eventually, sink when you're out of the rising. Yeah, yeah. Air. So I tried. Well, 
so hard to find the rotation on this thing, but like here's the dot of where it happened. I, I found the spot on Google Earth just mapping out the the stuff from because yeah, there's a great view of the landscape from up here. And so this is um, this one here. Yeah, so this is velocity and. This is really all the better that we have here. We kind of have an outflow boundary, maybe some, I, that's gotta be an outflow boundary from the storms to the right, but that's not a whole lot better. Fortunately <laughs> well, though- Well, if the, Norman, huh? if the yeah. Norman Oklahoma guy couldn't find rotation, I'd be amazed if you found it. Fortunately, there's <laughs> actually a second radar here. So I've got that one pulled up here, the archive radar data. This one doesn't have nearly as good range. This is not one that, like, you can see in radar scope or anything, so I'm not exactly sure what it's for. Oops. And, um, no! <laughs> Pulling up things on the other screen. And so this one here show has way more frames and is closer to the action. So here's the dot of where it occurred. And so even then, it's super hard to see. But I'm pretty sure that right here, right there, that's it. And it kind of moves a little this way. I'll play it back again. And uh, um, this time frame by frame right there. That's got to be it. Like, well, didn't you say there was there? There was some ground circulation on it too, so it was more than just yes, a funnel cloud? Yes, there was ground circulation. So over here on Facebook, Judy L. Curry actually caught it, and she posted this publicly on her Facebook page here. And so there it is just spinning here, and and just, just basically looks like a dust devil. She didn't realize that... Just above her was some this cloud that was just barely popping up, and so I did a little bit of um, scouting on Google Earth and actually found her house. It's actually in the very beginning part of the video from the glider. It's right here. So the video, you know, starts out like this, and so there's the funnel cloud. But this is her house. Her driveway matches the frame, and I also verified it on Google Earth with, like, the wind turbines that she has off in the distance. So it starts over here. Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> so it starts over here, and then eventually moves along this way. So, uh, and if we scroll up on her Facebook page here, she's got another video of here, and this actually shows... The funnel cloud, and then there's the little plane just hanging out up there, and so uh, it took me like four times to be able to see that speck. I don't right know how you ever found <laughs> Well, I mean, she mentioned it here in the description of her video, so yeah, that so she noted that makes it a full blown landspout tornado. So so impressive. Yeah, what do you think, Amber? Do you think that? flying around a funnel cloud, even though it was technically just a land spout, do you think that's safe? <laughs> do you have to ask that question? Nope. <laughs> no? Oh, man. What that's, do you think? If we were out there gliding and a, and a funnel cloud just appeared right above us, what what do you think no. you would do? Even if you're in a spacecraft and there's a tornado on Mars. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just no, a land spout. <laughs> well, you... Well, the, the part about that, that, I mean, the, the cloud base is looking like a Colorado storm there. So I'd be like, I mean, it's going to happen in a minute, especially when you see that. But at the same time, you're kind of there. So you might as well uh, inform. You might as well take a quick video and then get the heck out of there really <laughs> fast. <laughs> like, <laughs> okay. What do you think would have happened if he flew into it? That is for you to decide. <laughs> well, fortunately, there is, as I was looking up videos of this, if you search funnel cloud glider, this is not the first encounter with a funnel cloud. There's a couple of them on here. And so this guy is nuts here. So I will, I'll just provide just a link to his video, but <laughs> he... 
<laughs> yeah, here, let me send this to you. He actually flies into it. 25. This was four years ago, and um, somewhere overseas, Germany. That's where it was. Yeah, I mean, I assume he's breaking up the circulation because his plane is so wide, but then does he start losing control of the plane? It's hard to tell. Yeah, so he says here in the description... Um, the mini tornado had a vertical gust of 12 meters per second, which 12 meters per so second. So it started tilting his glider a little. So I just guess. 26 miles an hour. So um, the terminal velocity of a typical flying object is like, I think, 125, 150, something like that. And so had 12 meters per second. And at the beginning, my glider was nearly turned into an inverted flight. Just insane how you can play in a glider with the power of nature. <laughs> so he nearly lost control in it. I'm not sure what, like, the beeping sound is in it. Like, whether or not that is talking about, like, his his pitch or his tilt or something like that. Um, but yeah, he <laughs> nearly got turned upside down by the thing. About a spacecraft that's fully dependent on how the wind or what the wind is doing. I wouldn't be driving into no... And spout either, but yeah. So oh, and the radars there really reminded me of yet another impressive, non-predicted storm. Oh yes. That also people were saying there was no warning. There was no warning. This is going to happen. Yes, the Platteville, Colorado tornado. This one it, it, was in a populated area just north of Denver. So it was it happened earlier this month. And this thing was insane. Like some of the footage that people got here of this, like and it just sure. towered into the sky. So we've got uh uh let's see, let's start with the national no, actually let's start with the nine news article there. So go ahead and pull oh, yeah. that up because they have a, a great summary of the whole thing here. I've only been to Platteville, Colorado once, and that was to pick up a little puppy about nine years ago. So I'm to think of puppy there being Rosie. an actual a little Rosie. You'll see Rosie in some videos here and there. Yeah. But she was born in Platteville. This tornado was in their backyard. But all right, so News Nine had a great Weld County now. Most of you probably don't know, but Weld County, Colorado, is has a claim to fame, which is they have the most tornadoes in any other county. In oh, the country. give me a break! Well, Why is that, Billy? Weld you. County here is like one of the largest counties in the country. Like Weld County, Billy, has it's not even Tornado Alley. How of course, it's gonna get more tornadoes because it's. It's such a giant county. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> All right, so Weld County um, is across north central Colorado. It, it'd be a fun place to have, like, an extra home, just in case. But. Mm -hmm. All right, so many people were complaining that there was no warning for this. So Oh, well, yeah, um, I mean, this... it just, just look at the radar here because it's just, like, nothing. Like, this is, this is what the radar looked like just before it happened. Wasn't sto It wasn't. A uh, severe thunderstorm warning. There is like zero warning. Before. Right there, there's the first tornado report. <laughs> I'm looking at a tornado, and there's no warning on my phone. But mm -hmm. sometimes here in Colorado, in particular, we just like our land spouts. What can you say? Okay, <laughs> so News Nine says this particular land spout tornado developed with a non-rotating thunderstorm, which we can see a buyer radar formed over the top of some spinning air that already present was present on the ground. That's interesting. Well, that's the that's storm, what just the generic explanation for any land spout. When the storm's updraft pulled that spinning air up into the cloud base, it became a tornado. On Monday, there was a slight convergence of wind in southwest Weld County that might have created the spinning column of air. The column is actually horizontal to the ground at first, and then it gets stretched vertically by the storm updraft. There are additional vorticity added to that column by an outflow boundary, which we love those outflow boundaries. Yeah, in Colorado. You, can, you can see it here. It's just um, just past the radar site. Oh, there, there's like a couple in, of them. 
moving in from in some thunderstorms that popped up east of DIA, which is our Denver International Airport. Now, I might point out that when Billy and I took our storm spotter classes through, we went to the northern Colorado storm spotter, uh -huh. and they said that the airport is in a place where winds just tend to go around the airport. It's and it says just a the swirl. It's a natural swirl, they say, that happens all the time. And, uh, ooh, do you have an example? Of that? Uh, I was just ooh. wondering if the her is going to pick it up in the wind speeds. Um, but the the weather, the meteorologist from northern Colorado said, yeah, when they built the Denver International Airport, they did not consult the meteorologist. And this natural swirl happens all the time. So the winds are always changing. And uh, they say that... Uh, when the airport calls and says, what direction should we have our planes fly in today? They're like, you didn't ask us meteorologists where to put the airport. So apparently this swirl <laughs> is a very common thing yep. near DIA. So it's interesting. There is a storm east of oh, DIA. There it is. The real term, real term that is a non-supercell tornado or a mesocyclonic tornado. Some witnesses said the tornado looked more like a supercell tornado because of the lowering. Um, so he said there might it might have looked like a wall cloud and the location near the main updraft after the land spout next to the cloud base there will sometimes be a lowering and that lowering can also be spinning but that does not make it a supercell tornado interesting so it's it's a wannabe tornado wannabe tornado yeah because looking at the velocity here um we just kind of like have we kind of have some inflow and we have some outflow and there's sure. not really like the whole thunderstorm doesn't look like it's spinning. We'd be seeing broader rotation instead of just kind of convergence of inflow and outflow. Well, and you you said that it probably was one of the most photogenic tornadoes. Oh yeah, this thing was absolutely here. beautiful here. Oh man, I've got so many tabs open now. <laughs> <laughs> you mean many more? There we go. Because and. Continue reading because they just they they describe more details about this thing. And yeah, this the key is that the storm was a non-rotating storm when the tornado first torn first formed, and that's what made it non-supercell. We know that. Scrolling past a picture here, a tornado warning was issued on the storm only after the tornado was spotted on the ground. This is Correct. an unfortunate trait to the land spot tornadoes. There is no warning prior to the tornado formation. Yeah, like, Reason. when I first saw it, I was like, there's a tornado warning. Like, this is when I first saw it. It looked just like this on radar scope. I'm like, that's, there's a tornado there? <laughs> Land sprout. Well, and it's, what, two and a half hours away, so we start having friends ping us. Did you know there's a tornado up in Denver? Yeah, uh -huh, I can't get uh -huh, there. Uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah. <laughs> if I radar. could have a superpower, it would be teleportation, I think. Any storm chaser. The radar that the National Weather Service meteorologists used to scan storms for rotation cannot see land spouts until a few minutes after they form. Yeah. A supercell tornado can be seen on radar 8 to 18 minutes before it becomes a tornado. Oh, it's yeah. Still storm chasing would be, like, impossible if that wasn't the case. <laughs> it takes forever. All right. Number three, the tallest tornado. This is yeah. actually... This is not actually a statistic that is kept in the record book, but it's one of the tallest in recent memories. The uh, National Weather Service estimates it was more than 10,000 feet high. That's two miles. That really, that means nearly 5 million people on the front range could see it from 70 yeah, miles Yeah, that's okay, crazy. So you, that's the thing that, that's like stretching for us. That, that, yeah, that would be going taller than Pikes Peak because we're at like, what, 6,000 feet here in the Springs? Yeah, Pikes Peak is 14, so that's 8,000 feet. So it'd be taller. It'd be like a funnel cloud we saw on Pikes Peak touching down on ground here. And this was nuts. <laughs> I have never seen Nine News actually send up a helicopter for a tornado. It was on the ground that long. I forgot about that. Yeah. Um, Even they said, like, so we could have jumped in the car, Billy, and gone to Kiowa, which is an hour north, and been able to see it. They said people in Kiowa could see this thing. Just... Kiowa, let's see, where's where's Kiowa on here? Because Kiowa is way down here. So here's Colorado Springs. Kiowa, how, yeah, they say in the article where 
How far away could it be seen by? Like the distance? Seventy miles. So. Seventy well, miles. Parker, Kiowa, and Aurora were all able to see it, which is, I mean, Platteville. That's a two and a half hour drive. I drove up there to pick oh, out my puppy and two weeks later. Two weeks later, I went up there to get my puppy, and I was like, "This is such a long drive." I was but, so jealous of a storm chaser Tony that like had just bought a house. He had like an AccuWeather um, That's funny. <laughs> interview of him. He said he's, in all of his storm chases, his wife finally saw a tornado because all she had to do was look out a window. Oh, darn it. That I'm sounds like it. something our parents would say. Like, mom finally saw a tornado because it was right there after we bought a house. Mm-hmm. They officially rated this an EF1. With 110, a threshold of 110 miles per hour damage. Oh, wait, the- that article is outdated. And, uh, that, when was this written? Probably uh, the day after. Let's see. So here's the official damage survey. So the tornado reached a peak intensity of EF2 on the advanced Vegeta scale with estimated wind speeds of 120 miles an hour. This thing got That's it impressive. I, I mean, land spouts can go, what, EF3? Uh, EF one, two, three. Uh, okay. I don't know. There might be Ooh, w- there might be a couple of them. And this thing actually did some significant. Look at this! It overturned a car. Yeah, that's impressive. And did they say how wide it got at the base in that report? Because it looked so wide at one point when you. This one is a, a very house. bare bones. Oh wait, um, max width fifty yards. So, a good chunk, 150 feet. Well, they said, um, compared to other Colorado tornadoes, 90% of Colorado tornadoes are in EF1 are weaker. So, um, (laughs) yeah, this is outdated and it's now. Wow. Yeah. I wish they had a KMZ file so I could take a look at it on Google Earth, but some. Sometimes there's the surveys don't warrant that. So that thing would have been most. just breathtaking to see. So And you can't you can't get there. There's no prediction. There was there was not even a two percent chance for tornadoes that day. Oh no. Because you'll drive around Colorado if there's a two percent. Mm-hmm. But there was nothing that yeah, day. Yeah, and so. there it just always seems like that there's just one tornado that's just absolutely photogenic a year and only half the time at least since i've been chasing is there any forecast like there was the i think it was it the laramie tornado or the where laramie wyoming tornado this thing that there was a two percent issued i believe just east of here but this thing was absolutely oh. photogenic and it's like uh, just a little surprise for people who happened to be there that day <laughs> And then it makes all the other storm chasers like, I missed the good one, <laughs> but there's no way. Yeah. No and way then, of course, way. there was the drill bit from last year, although this had a 5% chance. So if I just lived closer, just I would have been all, all over this thing. This thing lasted on the ground for so long. And another, Minnesota. Th- yeah, another thing that was incredible about the Landspout tornado is it was on the ground for a half hour. Yeah, they said most... Land spouts last less than 10 minutes, but this one was 35 minutes. <laughs> and it went 7.5 miles. That's impressive. Yeah, that's <laughs> so, nuts. It must have... Do you know how fast it was moving? Oh, man, I, I don't know. Well, I mean, I mean, we could do some basic division here if it took a half hour. How? What did the article say specifically? 7.5. 7. 7.5 miles. 7.5 miles in how long? 35 minutes? 30 minutes? 35 minutes. 35. 35? Uh, that was wrong. Um, 60 divided by 35. <laughs> nope, nope. Invert that. Okay, 0.53 <laughs> hours. And so... Um, no, wait. We do want to invert that and then multiply that by... No. Billy used to be a math counts when he was little, so... Oh. Math was his strong student. Now I'm, I'm now I'm, I'm, I'm lost. Was... Twelve miles an hour. I might have <laughs> did that right. I don't know. <laughs> so. uh, half hour. So it would have been fourteen miles an hour. Be 
if you divide it by two, because it was 35 minutes. Oh, then maybe I got it right. I think I did the math right, actually, then. So, (laughs) anyway. again, they they finished this article by saying, Weld County, this is Billy's pet peeve, gets more tornadoes out of any Mm -hmm, other county mm -hmm, in America. mm -hmm, Yeah. Okay, Uh, anyway. This was was number 293, by the way. Since 1950. 293. Anywho, um, let's... 90% of those are less than EF1. So that's how I like tornadoes, by the way. I prefer that they're not dangerous. I could go drive my car in. Though, probably not this one. I don't yep. want my car over here. All right, so All right. I guess those were the yeah. biggest stories of the day. I know we just barely scratched the surface of, like, everything yeah. that's been happening. Because actually, just... Here's, here's a quick summary. Uh, if we go to the storm reports here, uh, we got some tornadoes yesterday, and I, this is where I was in Kansas, getting rained out. And well, They were back in Illinois. Huh? And then I was in central Kansas, north central, nor- northeast Kansas the day before, and of course all the tornadoes in Iowa, and in um, Missouri, and even Wisconsin. And nothing from there, nothing from there, and oops. Are there, just were there some in Missouri? I guess there were some in Missouri. Yeah, there, there's a lot of tornado. Oh, yeah, that was the, the Chicago day, the Chicago land areas. And then, of course, uh, apparently more land spouts. I missed these land spouts because I was on a mountain and I didn't have cell service. Oh, well, you know, I I was out at a dog show out east and I tried to follow some storms. Oh, did you? You went storm chasing with me, I, did you? Oh, uh, you know, I, this. you like, taught me a lot. There's like tornadoes here every day. But anyway. But no reception in the mountains or something like that. Why don't we take a look at some of my storm chases from... I left you in the dust. Yeah, Ooh, how could satellite you? Satellite imagery. Um, oh, 16 satellite. So anyway, this was my storm chase from when was this? Uh, the I don't know the 24th. So I was just going along here. Let's zoom into 100. percent This is just screen captured off my iPad. So I was getting in position, waiting for all of these clouds to clear. And so you can kind of see that there's this boundary coming up. That we're really hoping that that boundary would be the play for tornadoes. And so I was just waiting along, and I like had my eye on this storm over here, and I was like, okay, you know what? I'm going for it. And so then I start getting uh, media pending. Like I was like, oh, I really hope that like none of these storms like produce as I'm going the opposite direction. But this one's looking better and better and better. And so pretty much every chaser and their dog was on this storm. But there it goes, went tornado warned right in front of me. So let's see if I can find some of that footage here. And how do you nope. always pick the right one? That no, did not out. pick the right one at all. This is when I was driving towards it. And I mean, according to that radar, it looks like the right one at yep. the time. There's some cool. This was so Eight. humid. It was so hot, like seventy degree dew points. It just ah. I spent, I lived one summer in Missouri and I was like, I cannot take this. And I moved to Colorado. That is actually kind of a cool time lapse there with all the crepuscular Ooh, rays mountain. there. I mean, we were born and raised in Montana, so humidity was not a thing. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Well, I mean, it was worse than it was here in Colorado. So. you driving, you driving. Driving. Nice. Yeah, and eventually I drove under one base before I got to the tornado warn storm that kind of had me a little interested and uh come on where where just are you? Just can't hmm. see the storm you're right yeah there. Is yeah that that's yeah this i normally see this kind of stuff in like east texas or oklahoma i think this is daniel shaw just hanging out in front of me so <laughs> and you just start out there <clears throat> yeah his he's got that um he's got some instruments that are very recognizable on top of this thing uh okay and so here's the first base that I went under. This one looked really interesting, but I was going yep. for the one that looked better on radar. So and eventually yeah. it comes up into frame over here. There it is. There's the, the storm that went tornado warned right there. And so, so eventually it did like make a wall cloud. So um, 
It's like, yeah, so here we go. So it's like trying to make a wall cloud. This is right when it went tornado worn. So nice. I was like in perfect position. I was like, ah, if this does something, I need to be ready for it. And so it made a nice wall cloud, but then eventually I just kind of got stuck on some uh, kind of mud. Well, I didn't get completely stuck, but, you know, it was... <laughs> um, it slowed me down quite a bit, and so I did my best to, um, I stayed in good position for a little bit, but then the roads just slowed me down. There was a tree that was down on the dirt road, and so eventually I'm like, ah, I should just go all the way down to pavement, and it took me a long time to catch back up with it, but by the time I did, it just completely turned uh, into a giant mess. Thanks. And so then I just kind of wandered around like a lost soul, hoping for something to happen. <laughs> nothing ever did. I was like, ooh, they're converging. Maybe I should get in the convergence zone, and nothing happened. Reed Timmer got excited about a wall cloud there, but... And so then I just drove... Although that hook got my attention for a little bit, but it, that did, did, didn't materialize, and I spent the night at a Walmart. Yeah. It all ends at Walmart. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, dude, their Wi-Fi is amazing. Like, yeah, don't. <laughs> so the next day, um, they issued a five percent oh. for this area. Anyway, and so this, uh, the I'm just wandering around aimlessly here. Here, I got stuck in some tough traffic, and let's zoom back into uh, full resolution. And so I'm like, well, maybe I'll go down south. Maybe there will be something there. And it's just, pfft, no, the whole thing is totally outflow down on it. You can see the outflow boundary just hanging out there. So then I just decided to car camp at another Walmart there in El Dorado. And I just hung out there and just got rained on, hoped that the parking lot didn't flood or anything. So <laughs> your worst concern. So like, that's what well, I was well, doing the last two days. So from your your storm chase the first day that you just showed us, there was one video that you did get that you haven't shared yet. Huh? Oh yeah. Oh, sir, <laughs> sister who let out a scream. <laughs> I That's funny. Yeah, I posted it on Facebook. Uh, let's see. Did I? Where where would I have saved that? It's got to be around. We had here. a nice little. We had a nice little severe thunderstorm roll through Colorado Springs, and unfortunately, one of my dogs has had an upset tummy all week and has left me multiple surprises around is. the house. There it is. And I'm on the phone with Amber at this point. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm just what like, whatever. What? Sounds like her house just exploded. <laughs> yeah, I feel like my house just exploded. What yep. exploded? That was lightning. It made me scream. Ah, <laughs> 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 oh, I gotta love Colorado Springs lightning. Yep. So here at the end, uh, on my Facebook page, I like showed the radar a little bit. So think right there next to her. There, it showed a couple of lightning strikes. So. I almost wonder, it shows two zaps right next to you. So it must have gone just zap, zap. And then another one not well, too far away from you as well. And that's what's interesting. I could have sworn I saw it to my slight right. And then when it took about a half hour, 20 minutes to a half hour before a fire engine actually showed up in the neighborhood. I was like, ooh, something did get hit. So I took the dogs around the block. And uh, you should have filmed it. You should have asked the people to go uh, check out their backyards. You're, you're bolder than I am. But uh, it's only three houses away. I looked it up on Google Maps, and it literally is the house behind me, one house in between, and then it was the house there. Like, it was that close, but I thought for sure it was this way, and really it was a cottonwood tree this way that got hit. Um, so you, you just never know. All you see is a column of light and then instantaneous I am, and then I screamed. I didn't think I would scream. I, I so thought that it was Helen, our younger sister, that was screaming because she always freaks out for crazy stuff, like, um, <sighs> like the dog knocks over the scratching post kind of thing. That's what I thought happened, but it was Amber that was screaming. <laughs> yeah, my poor dogs were like, 
oh my gosh we they were almost outside the whole day for that but thankfully we just come inside and we were not in the front yard uh, but it was fun talking to the neighbors afterwards there were multiple families coming out saying what got hit it was so loud like it shook the house um in fact our other brother just moved down uh, one block down the street and they were the lightning strike was equal distance between my house and their house <laughs> and their kids crying uh so it was an impressive loud it kind of makes you shake it's so loud so, so loud. the only other time i've had lightning that close, we gotta get I you was... more security cameras because you have one of like your deck but that's about it <laughs> and it's I standard definition <laughs> the only other lightning strike i had close like that i was stopped at an intersection and it hit the light on the other side of the intersection and that yeah i was shaking after that one i think my window was down and it just was like and the light turned green there were cars on all sides of the intersection and nobody moved we were all just so stunned that so the lightning stunned. Came there. i mean the the lights didn't go out we just were like what just happened yeah that, rem yeah, that reminds me, like, one of the first times I came to visit you, and, uh, oh, man, I don't know if I can find it. I'm not sure. Is this it? Yeah. Oh. Right here. Trying to get the freeze frame. <laughs> Jeez, of course. Gotta do the slow-mo. <laughs> Man, it just... The audio... The, the the camera on that thing isn't very good, but, like, if you go by frame by frame here, dink, there's, like, a little... You, you can kind of see it on the bottom part where there's, like, distortion, but there's just, like, a flash, and it's just bang. Like, <laughs> So cool. oh, I wonder where that was. <laughs> yeah, okay, anyway, it's about time we wrap up the show. So, anyway, thank you all so much for watching. What What do you think, Amber? Do, do you think we can do this live next week? What do you, what do you think? Oh, boy. What do you think? Yeah, we got Live? some work to do. <laughs> you got some work to do. <laughs> yes, I definitely need to prep more because there's so much that I want to show from all of the weeks. And so there's there's a lot more that we skipped over and whatnot. And so if a damage survey comes out with the, the Breton tornado, then we might have to look at that again. But so... Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching, and so hopefully you guys are liking this. We're, we're, we're see how it goes. At least we got the video quality improved a little bit this week, so we're, we're taking some baby steps here. Anyway, until next time, see you guys.